Vasquez. The huge suplex. All right, off and running here on TCA. Thoughts count anywhere. Brett Lawson filling in for the Hall of Famer, Aaron Phillips, who is under the weather medically and should be back in action next week. So it's an absolute honor to be filling in for that Hall of Famer. Um, Chief, just join me on Aaron, the show that Aaron and I host, Unsportsmanlike Conduct, did an outstanding job. And towards the end of that show, we actually had Scott Hosey of Power Play Collectibles join us, immediately talking the state of the NFL and dual threat quarterbacks, and now immediately talking both what's into coming into store for power play and just the Vegas sports landscape as a whole. Scott has a very busy Saturday, so he's going to take just a quick couple of minutes <coughs> here to talk about what's coming up. We teased it on the end of Unsportsmanlike Conduct, so Scott, thanks for sticking around. And um, you don't already mentioned Mac, Max Crosby, right? Yeah, Max Crosby. Don't forget Matt over here. Oh, well, Matt's, well, Matt's a regular. One, 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 one of the originals. <laughs> Matt's a regular. That's I feel like it's old, old home week, me sitting yeah. next to Matt and, uh, you know, the, the Hall of Famer. You? Yeah, it's like, it's like th this fill-in guy. No, but absolutely. like Matt. And then Chief and I have been long friends. Hey, so. Matt, Matt's the one who's responsible for the content, baby. Matt's the one who's mapping <laughs> this all out. So without Matt, I would have absolutely nothing to do here. Wait I'm just trying to. I'll, I want to throw something out. Go ahead. Uh, three quarters is kicking in. How many more shows before our hundredth? I think we got four. Uh, you're you got to clear your schedule that day for the hundredth show. You got to be on with us that day. For the well, I was on the first. So I might as well be on the hundredth. That's exactly <laughs> right. Yes, sir. I got to look at the calendar. That's why I'm not on the shows anymore. Uh, let's see. Well, I got a bad if it's considered three weeks from now or four weeks from now. Uh, I'd have to look. I'll let you know. Well. If it's three weeks, we'll all be at Sunset Station. Why? Because we have a sports card toy and collectible show with a few wrestlers there. One being a Hall of Famer, Barry Windham. The other one being Mike Rotundo, IRS. Oh. And then some people don't know him, but it's Tyler Rotunda, mm. who is otherwise known as? Bo Dallas. Yeah. So we have two of the three family members. Maybe there might be a Feenly appearance. Oh, well done. Huh? Well done. Huh? Hey, what, 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 what? <laughs> Breaking news. So I, I appreciate the time this morning. I came down because I gave Matt something that I want to give away our listeners uh, for a little bit of advertising uh, plug. And, and we thank you for that, sir. Not a problem. We got eight tickets, two pairs of four or four pairs of two, however math you want to do it in the Clark County School District. So with that being said, Unicon, October 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Yep. Three-day passes, not one day, but three-day passes, normally about 55 bucks. So we'll at least give away in pairs of two or however yeah, you, sure. Matt wants to do it since he's the old-timer here on the show. Yeah. So that definitely, right. however Savvy you want to give them away. But uh, we broke the news. Uh, last night we signed Max Crosby to yep. attend Unicon. Also, we have a golden night, by the way, of Zach White Club. And there you go. Yeah. And if, for those of you just tuning in who didn't tune in on, go, on the Go Live family, you actually teased that towards the end of our show, and we very well set it up to the start of TCA. So there you go. A very recognizable Raider, a very recognizable Knight. Young studs young, coming up. Young yeah, studs on who defense, are very yeah. much the franchise is built around, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Yep. And Crosby, since being drafted out of what was it, Eastern Michigan, has really yep. caught on a lot of traction for the local fan culture. So that's so big, you know, being able to hone in locally like that but kind of look at the bigger picture as well, especially for Absolutely. something like power play and what you guys bring to the table. Absolutely. Yeah. And then the versus wrestling is also going to be part of Unicon, which ties into the show here. Yep. Uh, Wes over there has done a great job with the organization. And uh, I actually did, you know, for the first time in probably 25 years since I had an organization or an indie, I booked my first match. It was like old home week. So we got Christy Janes, who was uh, part of AEW for a while, mm -hmm. AAA. Uh, she is going to be wrestling Mara Posa. From Lucha Underground. Oh, really? That sparked a reaction from the chief. Oh, yeah. Otherwise known as cheerleader Melissa. Otherwise known as Rasha Saeed from Impact. And if uh, Dino Danelli is listening, <laughs> Dino, congratulations. Or, or, or your buddy out in California. David Marquez? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I talked to David last night. And also don't forget, uh, for the people who are in the L.A., Southern California area, Matt and I will be down there when? September 25th? 
Yeah, something like that. I love the certainty, Matt. There oh, you go. yeah, I know. I, it, it, I like if it wasn't for a candy no, I, I get it, yeah. But uh, <laughs> LAX Fan Fest down there, they, they're uh, doing a great show at the uh, LAX Hilton on the weekend prior to Unicon, which I think is like the 25th. Uh, it's the Saturday. Come see Bret Hart, headliner, and Hall of Famer also, Kane. Just blaming on my three-quarters halfheimers. That's all. Contagious. On the, uh, the other quarter? Then you're taken care of. Exactly. <laughs> you guys have a great show. I'm going to cut out of here. I got some things to do. Uh, maybe another night to sign. I got to get on the phone with them. There you go. Hey, so thanks, guys. Have a good show. Thank maybe, you. Maybe we'll have breaking news sometime. Maybe so. Maybe I, I'll retire and never come back. I love it. <laughs> Take care, guys. And I love it. I love, love you, brother. He, he, com he comes in. He's talking dual threat quarterbacks, options, <laughs> zone, zone reads. And he ends with the plug in the business. That right there was an effective 15 minutes. So thank you, Scott. And uh, good luck to you the rest of that way. As we have plenty to talk about, Jen. You should broadcast your show from there. There you go. Hey. We've actually, and we've actually talked about that with Aaron. We're trying to get unsportsmanlike -like <laughs> conduct in the mix for that. So there you go. All trying to help each other out here for the Go Live Vegas family and everything else. Again, uh, Power Play Sports Collectibles. So, gentlemen, it is an absolute honor. And, again, thank you so much, Scott. But it is an absolute honor to be sitting here for the Hall of Famer, the voice Aaron Phillips. I like to think <laughs> Chief did a darn good job doing it on our last show. So I like to think that I'm somewhat competent to fill in here on this time around for TCA. And with SummerSlam a week out and obviously plenty of other things to talk about, eventful SmackDown, Rampage debuts for AEW, tons going around in the world of uh of the king of sport if you will so right off and matt always does such an excellent job with the run sheet leading off though on this uh topic filled saturday rumor now tensions are running high to Time say out. the least okay Time out. okay chief Time out. we got a little audible mr matt what's up do you have a story for us yeah i kicked this bum out of heart attack grill yesterday and he came back like 20 minutes later with the note, and he slammed it on the counter. I love that. And was time. and was like, "You guys are being shut down by Homeland Security." <laughs> I and love he that. just left. Every time I tune, ah! every time I tune in, whether I you know stay around for the first segment of the whole show, I'm, I'm like on the couch when we wrap up here on Saturdays, and you guys get going. <laughs> Matt always seems to have an epic story from you know downtown or somewhere on the strip. So there you have it. Some festivities I'll, going on at the Heart Attack Grill. I'll send Aaron the notes. See if he'll put it up. The thing is hilarious. <laughs> Homeland Security. All right, where are we the, at? The lengths people will go to to get their point across, especially uh, all for Sin a burger. It's all for a burger <laughs> at a at a landmark spot in Sin City. So there hey, you uh, go. But I again, got I got one more thing too. Let, let's hear it, uh, Chief. Let's hear it. One of our family members, Mr. Sean. Uh, I hope you're okay up at Aliante ER right now. Uh, please. Uh, Give us a text and let us know uh, what's what. I don't like worrying, but I'm worrying. Yeah. So. And again, well said there, Chief. Just like our thoughts and condolences to everything that Aaron, Aaron is going through as well. Nothing, again, to be overly concerned about, but definitely we want to give that kind of credit and that kind of, I guess you could say, just, just recognize when it should be recognized and, uh. and point – Bring attention to it because our thoughts are with them. But again, plenty to talk about today in the squared circle landscape. And starting it off, rumors now, one of those things where it's kind of volatile. The highs are, it's like the highs are never as high as people want to make it seem, and the lows are never as low as people make it seem. But when stuff like this surfaces, you definitely, it does catch your attention. It is a little bit glaring. Oh, yeah. yeah what, what are your thoughts, Matt? It's kind of crazy because, like, you'd figure, like, they have, like, they're like the number one like thing in WWE. You think they have it down now, right? And apparently, from what I've read, Triple H is solely being blamed for the Wednesday Night Wars and them losing. Right. So when they fired all the NXT talents last week, mm -hmm. he didn't even know about it. He started finding out when the talent found out. So I'm sure that rose a lot of tensions in that family. There goes billionaire Vince, huh? Right. And especially given the fact that this is for the longest time since, what, like 2014 and everything got going with the Performance Center. This is basically been Triple H's baby. Yeah. So pretty much every time you associate those two brands and those two identities together nxt and triple h it's usually always in positive conversation but maybe now we're getting to the point where i'm not saying he's been there too long or he's been too you know involved but nothing lasts forever so it's kind of those things that maybe he, you know he's not overstayed his welcome but it's getting to that point where now nxt doesn't need triple h anymore because we know triple h doesn't need nxt that's something he prides himself on and wants to grow but it, he at this point he could do something else with the company you know i uh I just wonder why Steph and her brother, mm -hmm. it's about time that um, 
they start standing up to dad a little bit. Right. And, uh, you know, as, as a commoner, there's no way it's Triple H's fault. I don't give a shit what they say. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. It's not Triple H's fault. Who made the cuts? Vince. Yep, and okay. that's always the case. Who does the, who does the writing? The creative assholes that don't know nothing about the wrestling profession. And who try to please Vince as a result. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, as, as I affectionately call them, they're ass kissers. Yeah. Okay, it's not Triple H's fault. I don't give a shit what they say. All right, but I think Stephanie and her brother need to stand up and say, you know, enough's enough. Dad, if you don't want to do it no more, we'll buy you out. We'll take the company over and we'll run the company and do a good job. Huh. Okay, so that's how I look at it. Strong thanks. He says he's good and he's cracking jokes while he's waiting around. Love you too, brother. Awesome. Good to hear from Sean. And absolutely, I, I think that's spot on, Chief, because it comes, there comes a point where he has to be told that this isn't working. We need to take a different approach. And I know it's so hard to do that with someone like Vince McMahon, who's not just the grandfather of the company. And I know you could say that his father really is, holds that role. But in terms of taking it mainstream and changing the industry as he did in the 80s, he's a guy who's, you know, everything points to him in terms of the trajectory of the business, let alone that company. So I get why maybe for the longest time it was hard to say no, but when it's actually deteriorating the product that you and Aaron and Matt talk about here on a weekly basis and what it does with the booking decisions at a time where the roster is more athletic than it ever has been before, maybe not as talented, but more athletically gifted probably than it ever has been before, eventually some, the chickens are going to come home to roost and something has to be done. I think... Uh you know, I was just reflecting back to when Vince really got started in the business. Yeah. Uh, when his father was running the business. And if you look back, basically, Gorilla Monsoon, Bobby Heenan, mm-hmm. those type of gentlemen were around the wrestling business to groom Vince and to help Vince out. When he took the business over, well, you look today, and uh, who's really there for, um, even though Triple H has been in the business for years, who's really there of a caliber to help him out? That's Sean, the point. Sean's there, okay? Uh, you know, Hall of Famer, Sean's there. But who... Sean's not going to push back on anything Vince does, though. Let's be real. Who's, who's stability-wise is there? Okay. Yeah. Uh, why has, you know, why has The Undertaker s- stepped away? Why has Stone Cold stepped away? Why has Ric Flair just left the right. WWE? And Jim Ross has been gone for a few years now. All those heads that, you know, were in the same boat as Vince, even though he may have been the man at the top... Those were the guys executing it out there, whether it be on commentary or in the ring or even just behind the scenes. Those are the guys that have really been, I guess you could say, they, they don't get the credit they deserve. And a lot of that goes to Vince. And here we are in full circle, and it's like the opposite side of the coin. Yep. Now Vince is getting all the blame, and it's because there's no one else there to kind of reel him back in. True. Maybe all the his little yes men are scared that yeah. if Triple H gets in charge, they might lose their jobs too. Right. So. Absolutely. And, you know, we talked about – Ric Flair possibly signing with AEW. We'll get to to that in a moment. But more rumors going on in the mill, going around in-ring worker and MC extraordinaire Max Caster reportedly suspended without pay and had to go to sensitivity training. He said those reports are false. Now, this one obviously jumps right off the page just because sensitivity training alone, especially in the world of professional wrestling, that's something that, you know, a few years ago would not be brought up. Let's just say that. You know, if if the boy wanted to learn something, he could have learned it. All he had to do is take a look at Mr. Bauer with the L.A. Dodgers, and he might have learned something about sensitivity. Mm. But you know what, you yeah. bonehead? If you did it, which we know you did, you know what? You deserve what you get. Absolutely. And if you get blacklisted, so bad, so sad. That's all I got to say on that one. Yeah. And, again, the controversial rap was removed, uh, you know, a- edited and tweaked. 
obviously anytime that happens, that's going to be a major talking point. But when you have the ramifications and the underlying factors that you just alluded to, Chief, that completely changes it. And it's one of those things where hindsight's 2020. When we find out more about this, it's kind of those things like, like a Trevor Bauer, Major League Baseball, or even a Deshaun Watson, if those things ring to be true, the quarterback for the Texans, yep. you know, not to tie too much of a real world sports aspect to it, but it's true. And that's how it's going to be perceived in the future. Tony Khan's not going to stand for it. What do you think, Matt? People are soft. Like, he's a heel. It was a little rap. Like, what's the big deal? Yeah. He's out there to get heat. And he pissed everybody off. He did his job. Here's my thing. That's where I, what I just said a moment ago, not to tie too much of a real-world sports aspect into this, because in professional wrestling, you are often your livelihood as a heel is to do just that. So I get it. There are certain things that should just be taboo in professional wrestling, and just like they are anything, but how do you determine that in this type of – scenery you know what i'm saying when you're supposed to go out and deliver a promo in this case deliver a rap so much of the issue with the industry as a whole is that they can't in any promotion or company establish heels because heels can't get that heat they can't get under the skin so when you have people trying to do it but then these are the consequences that's going to make that whole conversation that much harder to have you know as well. true wrestling fans are just too soft nowadays and, and a, i think a everybody's lot of, offended by freaking everything and wrestling fans are you know as much as we love them and as much as they are our clientele well really more so your guys' clientele again I'm, I'm a diehard fan i'm happy to be filling in here today but we know they don't exactly they can never really put a thumb on what they want because whenever they seem to get something they want, they push back on that and then complain about something else. And I, even wrestling fans who are listening and watching right now could probably acknowledge they've done that. If you look I, in the mirror, you probably have done that. I've done right. it. As, I've, you, we've done it as fans. I think if they give them the leeway to do, quote, unquote, what they may want to do, mm -hmm. I think there comes a point in time, though, that... It has to all be in good. Right. And, um, you know, what he said or what he didn't say, I don't care. It doesn't hurt me, but it could hurt somebody out there. And I think that's a point. That's the flip side to it. You know, we have to both look at yeah. both sides. Okay. Who's the ultimate responsibility? for that product on TV, Tony Khan. Tony Khan, the kid's not going to take the heat from the executives. Tony Khan's going to take the heat from the executives. So shit rolls downhill. And that's what's happened. And there, there's a lot of truth to that as well, Chief, because sometimes it is one of those things where, like, because Matt, I think there's a lot of truth in that. Sometimes wrestling fans are just too soft and, you know, get over it. But if something, if, if you're also alienating a demographic or a part of your audience that kind of detracts from what you're trying to do as well so it, it's really and again easier said than done especially from us sitting in our positions right armchair quarterbacking this thing yep. but it's easier said than done to be doing that and trying to get that kind of heel heat but also knowing what you can and can't touch so it's it's definitely a little it's a slippery slope to say the least yep. the best safe way for anybody to get heat this week could you imagine when they go to the united center Cult of personality hits. Yeah. The place goes crazy. Yeah. And MJF comes out and be like, do you expect somebody else or something? <laughs> that place would go insane. Absolutely nuts. And I love how you brought up cult of personality, too. That's the one ah. thing about looking at a, a worker like CM Punk. Because he used <laughs> that. <laughs> right. right. What, time out. She's got a time out. I hope if CF Punk has signed with AEW, he does a pipe bomb. Oh, of course. And oh, especially... He's and we'll, and we'll get to that coming up later in the show because he has some uh, beef, still long-running beef, no more, not even so much personal with Vince anymore, more so the state of the industry and like how the industry has carried itself in recent years. And he has plenty of thoughts on that. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'd love to see him like just let go, but oh, yeah. after Lighter the whole up. Max Caster thing, who knows right. if they're going to give anybody exactly. a live mic. Walking on eggshells type of thing. But I, I, I got to tell you, I think that's a great example, especially bringing up MJF. And cult of personality, he used that at the UFC. That's one theme that's so synonymous with him. So we don't have to worry about when Punk does likely make his debut for AEW. We don't have to worry about hearing it and thinking, oh, is this him? Is this him? The second you hear that little, <laughs> you're going to know who it is. So that's going to oh, be yeah. huge. Just like if Ric Flair were to, Ric Flair could come out to, I mean, we all know the theme and we all know the woo, but Ric Flair, as long as he just shows up on camera, he's going to get that pop in any role for AEW. Obviously, the second 
because you guys talked about it last week on the show. The second he was released from WWE, that's the first thing that kind of got brought up. Will he go to AEW next? That rumor has picked up a lot of steam. What are you guys' thoughts on uh, Nate going to AEW? I could definitely see it. I've seen Andrade do interviews, and he yeah. said he wants his whole family in AEW. Right. That's a good point. Well, that's Flair and Charlotte, so we'll see when her contract's up. But yeah. if the rest of her people are all in AEW. Family affair. Move on over. I could see her moving there, too. But right. I definitely see. Flair's been a spotlight chaser for, like, the oh, last yeah. 20 years. Oh, yeah. Let's he can't it. let it go. No, the reason why Flair is leaving is because he was not getting that spotlight the way he wanted to anyway, given the what Charlotte and that package and everything they were going through, uh, kayfabe. He didn't like it, and he didn't like how he was being portrayed, or at least how his family, and, you know, his whole regime, if you will, was being portrayed on screen. How much different will be in AEW? Likely it'll be different, but who knows the actual role he'll have. But I think this is just a way of him kind of cleaning the slate and saying, I still got it. I'm still the 16-time you know, world champ, Nature Boy Ric Flair. No. Pro styling and profiling. I could go over here and now make Tony Khan that much more successful, I'm give, whether it's true or not. I'm going to give you a perspective. You got it. Then we'll go to that, break. That's the difference between the NWA and the WWE. Mm. Okay. And are you talking uh, I'm not, I'm, historically? I'm talking okay. NWA down in the Charlotte area. Yeah, the territory the, days. The territory days. Right. That is the difference, okay? When Ric Flair was the man, okay, was a 16-time champion, mm -hmm. okay, earned it, saw him earn it, saw the blood and guts, but then you got... A guy, and I've said this before, you got a guy coming back, he's got a big contract, he comes back, do two, three shows, maybe in three years or so, and he's coming back. Now he's, um, uh, now he's got a match against Roman Reigns. I've never seen the sucker bleed in my life. He's never bled. Hmm. Who, okay. Cena? Yeah. Me you I never mean, saw that I quit match with him in JBL? Right, in the 04? No. You never, is that the only one he's bled? There's in? been a he's few. On a couple. There's been a few times uh, where but he's, that one with JBL, he was, lost was, a decent amount of blood. Yeah, he, that's good. The sucker deserves it. Okay, he's not a 17-time champ in my eyes. He'll never, and I mean this with all respect, he will never fill Flair's shoes. I think never. I think most people would agree because it got to the point where once he got well, to like champion, you listened to him last night. Oh, 17-time well, champion. Bullshit. That's kayfab. That's bullshit. But that's the best part, and we'll get to that after the break so because that he promo. Got to, he did his job. He got, he got under got your skin. To, he got to. Well, he ain't a 17 time champion. Okay, but before we go to break, let's actually touch on that a little bit more because I think it's interesting because it was, became clear that right around, you know, halfway through the 20. Hurry up. I got four minutes before I do my rant. You got and, it. And I just. You got, know, and you I got know, it. And I know what the hell I'm going to do. He's getting revved up, people. Who ain't <laughs> shitting. We'll actually tee that up and then we'll go to break. But it's yeah, interesting buddy. because ever since about the mid 2010s, it seemed like every title they gave him, even in that when he had that, the feud with Rollins, when Sting was coming back, what was that, 2015? Yeah. Every belt they've given him since then was strictly to get to that record. They, oh, yeah, they stopped sure. feeling real around like 20, around the, pretty much around the rivalry with Punk. Yeah. Around the summer of Punk, 2011, 2012, by that point, it seemed like everything since then has just been to stack Cena's resume so he can be the one to break Ric Flair's record. So if that's, it wasn't guy, what's worth that it, or Charlotte's? Ooh. Because Charlotte's is getting more and annoying. Is, and it's all nepotism, really. Say what you want. That is annoying. And Charlotte probably could, you could say she's the most naturally gifted to ever do it in terms of women's wrestlers. But let's be real. She's not that good. You no know, one, trying to stack no, 16 no, titles no, on yeah, her like no, that. No fast. one is that good. And no, that's, you a know lot what? of that's nepotism. It's, it's you know what? Thing. I've seen Charlotte wrestle and I've seen other women wrestle. And I'll tell you the most natural female wrestler I've ever seen. Who's that? Tessa Blanchard. Well, well, Bar none. There you go. I love it. Chief, Chief is ready today. He was ready when we were doing unsportsmanlike conduct earlier, and he's ready now. So plenty more come here on TCA. If you're watching, listening on our Go Live Vegas family of networks, <laughs> he's, he's getting all jacked up. We're going to take a quick break. Again, if you want to join the conversation, toll-free, 855-502-4321 or 702-329-6947, either of those lines, whether you're in or out of the States. Join the conversation. We want to hear from you. We have plenty more to come here on the show, so stick around. Uh -huh. It's Brett in for Aaron with Chief, with Matt. Thoughts can anywhere. We'll be back in a second. One. It's not the worst podcast ever, is it? It's no. the best podcast. Thoughts count anywhere. All your wrestling news, all your hobbit shit, hey, all your gimmickry. Go on over and listen wherever your podcasts are downloaded. 
The thoughts count anywhere in podcasts. I'm the big LG Doc Ellis. That's my endorsement. Booyah! At Firehouse Subs, a portion of every purchase helps provide much-needed life-saving equipment to first responders. We make our subs differently because our subs make a difference. Firehouse Subs. Enjoy more subs. Save more lives. If inspiration is the beginning, where does it lead? Experience the 2021 Mazda 3 sedan and see where inspiration can take you. Grab the brass ring in a 2021 Mazda 3 with exclusive FSW discounts at Finley Mazda. Get Garth today at the Valley Auto Mall. All right, fun stuff here, per usual, on Thoughts Count Anywhere. Starting off with Scott Hosey doing some great plug-in for everything regarding power play collectibles and everything uh, regarding him in the near future, which will very much affect us, both the show I host and this show. So we're excited for that in the near future. SummerSlam a week out, plenty to talk about in the professional wrestling industry. But Chief, man, oh man, did you stem up that rant that you're about to get to right now before we went to break. So without further ado, he's teed up. He's ready to go. The blood is boiling. He's fuming. Let's, all right, wait, you want to get to something on the monitor first? What does he got to do? Ryan Smith. Oh, wait, yeah. I, MJF and CM Punk in a promo battle. Book it, Tony Khan. Yeah, I like that one. That, that is a good one. And my apologies, I forget. We are a highly produced show here on TCA, so Chief has his own introduction bump. We're going to get to... Okay, there you go. Oh, oh yeah, oh, Matt, no, take it away from here. Go ahead, Matt. Take it away, Matt. <laughs> that was the note the guy dropped off. <laughs> yes. It was freaking hilarious. Let's if you read the whole thing, it went to, it ended up going down to, like, call Sergeant, was it Johnson from Nellis Air Force Base? Yeah. For more information. For those listening on Go Live Vegas or the Go Live Vegas app, to the Heart Attack Grill, this restaurant will be closed down, no if, ands, or buts about it. <laughs> Homeland Security will not tell you why. This is not their, what is that, job? Job. job. That's a little chicken scratchy. Uh, <laughs> heart attack? What is, I don't know. Does, does, n- not, does care. not care about oh, Homeland. Does Homeland. Not care Homeland. About Homeland does not care about zone, zone real, real estate, estate, or your next job. Only that you pack your lunch and go. This is not a joke. Oh, my God, it's double-sided. He even wrote a two in the upper left-hand corner. <laughs> he literally indicated that this was a two-page note. That is, that's brilliant. Very real. This is a big problem with them, and you have no idea how angry they are. They are calling it several. <laughs> I don't even know if we should keep going. Here, let's, let's wrap it up. For more information, please call Nellis Air Force Base and se- or send a message for Sergeant Johnson at 702-652-1110. 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 10. 11, 10. Extension 5 and then extension 3. <laughs> and then... <laughs> and then caps it all off with a signature. So I love it. So if you're listening on the app, you're probably driving around or you know, sitting around at, at home with your ear, your ear pods in thinking, what the hell was that? And if, you, and if you're watching on any of our video platforms, you're probably thinking, looking at it the same way we are, going, what? Matt, this is what you have to deal with. You don't Daily. Deserve, yeah, you don't deserve enough credit, brother. <laughs> all right, so... Uh, I love his stories. Yeah, absolutely. I'm happy. No, no page left unturned here, so I'm happy we addressed that as we teased earlier in the first segment. But here we are, second segment. We had a nice little break. Chief was ready to go. He, look at him. He's getting loose, getting the deltoids and the, the, everything warmed up, <laughs> getting, getting the joints oiled. Chief, me, 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 me. Right, there you go. Chief, Susu Studio, the mic is yours. I love it. Production value never fails, baby. Yeah, that's, what, that's, what, that's how we bring it to the table here at Go Live Vegas. That's what we do. I love it. All right, buddy. Let's go. All right, Chief, have at it. Good morning. This is my three minutes of fame. It's now 2.58. The Chief is in the house, and I'm going to continue on. I've seen people like Harley Race. Dusty Rhodes, Michael P.S. Hayes, and Ric Flair, plus Vern Gagne, and for people are allowed to have their 
opinion about the 17 time pot. There is no way, in my mind, that anybody can fill the shoes of Ric Flair. I heard Ric Flair do a speech once with Hulk Hogan back in the territory days. And Mr. Flair said to Mr. Hogan, it's going to be a cage. We're going to, blood, we're going to bleed. We're going to sweat and we're going to fill the boots up. Well, I'm going to tell you what, John Cena can't fill the boots up. And nobody in my mind in the profession today can fill the boat. I love it. I blew the mic. Uh, the mic is too hot. The, he the, actually had to grab another one. I love it. But anyway, getting back to it, um, there is no one, and I mean no one in the business today, that in Ric Flair's prime, they can't even come close to him. Okay. And again, I, as I said on the other show, today on our show right now, yeah. it's a different era. Okay. Yeah, we I, talked about it with the quarterbacks. And, and I, yeah. I get that. I get that. But you know what? There's nobody, and I mean nobody, that can fill rick flair's boots I, and i love it like um i, I love it because that is that is the chief's rant today and i didn't really raise my voice that much but that's the chief's rant today the chief over and out i always forget there's always a cap off too so my, my apologies <laughs> for jumping in there like 10 seconds too early but well said because don't I don't do it again no never uh, that my, my guest hosting days are over after that that, <laughs> that was a bad infraction on my end right in fact chief you're going to fill in for me in that chair next week on our on our show but i love it no way <laughs> i love it because whether you agree or not is secondary i love the fact that that conversation can be had because we're getting in a point where so much is new and so much like oh look what we have to bring to the table this shiny new car type of approach it waters down what was great in the past and it's much like what we're talking about with quarterbacks even when scott jumped on at the end of the last show he he said you know a quarterback every quarterback that's won the super bowl still does it from the pocket right so even though we're in a changing of the guard in terms of how that position is played and in terms of the caliber of athlete that plays it until it changes i guess you could say based off a super bowl oriented result it's still the same so John Cena, what you're basically saying is John Cena can win 25 world titles. Yep. He's still not Ric Flair because he never brought to the table what Ric Flair brought. And also, no matter as much as you know, we respect Cena and appreciate what he's done, he just didn't change the game quite the same way. And again, that's not really his fault. But Flair did it at a time where it was so much more crucial in the territory days. And he did it really as a heel, not as a baby face with the little kids going crazy for him with their t brightly colored T-shirts and baseball caps. No, he did it as style and profile and as the greatest heel to ever do it and probably the greatest promo to ever do it. So, I mean, I, I get where Chief's coming from, and I love the fact that you chose that as your rant. The, the match, you know, uh, I'll go here. Next week we're going to see Roman Reigns and John Cena. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a great match, mm -hmm. no doubt about it. But it's not going to hold the Harley Race and Ric Flair. Or Dusty Rhodes or, or Flair. Or Dusty Rhodes or, or Ricky Steamboat. Ricky Steamboat yep. and Flair. 60 minute match. Yeah. Okay. Let's that, rev that's up, Chief. It's going to be better than all those. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if Chief. You ain't, you ain't getting under my skin. Let's see if Chief. Oh, we're going to try. Matt, Matt says, <laughs> uh, Sean Hyde says, Matt, that Homeland Security is on line number one and would like to talk to you. Uh, and the other thing is, uh, Sean said that uh, that guy's been passing the note around to several businesses in downtown since I worked down there in 2012 to 14. <laughs> Thomas Burnett says, nobody can hold a candle the rick in his prime yeah and, and i think is that the and, truth and we closed we closed on sportsmanlike conduct last week with that any athlete you look in the modern day whether it be combat sports whatever <clears throat> especially like the fight game with a conor mcgregor floyd mayweather they took a page out of rick flair's book whether they acknowledge it or not yeah. in a way everybody since it's like rick flair and muhammad ali are really the two that stand out to me as far as bridging the gap between sports and entertainment and doing so in a way that can appeal to everybody regardless if you were a quote-unquote fan 
the, obviously, we're, we're, Ali was more socio political, racial ramifications, but still similar in terms of that impact. Now, Flair's got like his own shoes. They got like rap yeah. songs about him. Yeah, and all yeah, sorts of he's stuff. He's like he's considered like one of the top guys to reference in like just contemporary look at culture. The, look at the football teams in their locker rooms mm, and, and training camp. You see, you've seen Harbaugh bring him in to talk. You've seen all right. kinds. Numerous coaches bring him in to talk to guys during training camp meetings, like before film sessions and all that. As like the the guest speaker, yep. he walks in, everyone loses their shit. It's it, they go they go bonkers for him, and there's a reason for that. But don't don't get me wrong, okay. And I'm going to say this in John Cena's defense. Mm-hmm. John Cena has done how many? Um, oh, what's the organization? Make, Make a wish. wish. How, yeah. yeah. How, you know how many make a wish? Oh, as far as charity, you know, no one touches. Okay, them. that beyond. Okay, yeah, beyond. That's that 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 is an awesome point for that young man, and and I can call him a young man because he's younger than me. Mm-hmm. So you didn't watch him on the radio? No, I don't care. <laughs> uh, hey, be, can I go a different route? Absolutely. For, for a couple minutes. Absolutely. Okay. And well said on your rant again. I think that that can resonate with a lot of demographics. All right, take a pencil and piece of paper out. Oh, it's note-taking time. Wrestling shows coming into town next week. Mm -hmm. Grap House, August 19th versus Pro Studios. Bell time, 8 o'clock. Code Red, August the 20th, FSW Arena, 1 p.m. Fabulous Lucha Libre, August 20th, Sun Beast Training Come Down, 714 South 1st, 7 p.m. Bell. GCW Off the Rails, August the 20th, 233 South 4th Street, 7.30 7.30 p.m. bell time. Natural Boy Killers 3, August the 20th, FSW Arena. Start time, 11 p.m. FSW versus GTW, August 21st, FSW Arena, 12 p.m. Prophecy That's Super Moon Showdown. PWE, August 22nd, Super Beast Training Compound, 12 p.m. FSW Women's Show, August 22nd at the FSW Arena, 2 p.m. For the fans, August 22nd versus Pro Studios, 2.30 p.m. That is a free show, no cost to get in, fans. And then we have the Alliance, August 22nd, FSW Arena, 6 p.m. We also have World Wrestling Fest, August 20th through the 22nd, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. daily, located inside the Nerd, 450 Fremont Street, and WrestleSwap 2 at the Space, 3460 Cavaretta Court, August 20th to 12 p.m. And we'll send out the bills for all those plugs. Yeah, right. <laughs> and that, and Keep I, tabs. And that's it. So I read them out, fans, and uh, there you go. And if you take notice, I didn't mention SummerSlam at the, at the uh, whatever the hell the place is, Alliance Stadium. Oh, Allegiant Allegiant Stadium. Stadium. Yeah, yeah, that's Allegiant Stadium. Yep. Three, three quarters half is really kicking in. There you go. And I love uh, a man. Of, may or may not and I like a man, of, that a man of honesty, uh, right? There yeah. you go, <laughs> my, my man, right there, William Hudson. I'm gonna give him a shout out, my man down in down in Florida, my wrestling buddy. On with Ben. Cena has done more make a wish than anyone in his. Hello, man. Come on, will you at least get me a mic that works? He's definitely good yeah. with the kids. Yeah, We've no, seen he, that guy do some like. And and the other thing, Matt. Do we need to talk about Firehouse Subs at the end of the month, buddy? Oh, August 31st at 7 p.m. We have our next live remote from Firehouse Subs. What's the address? Was it 509? 5905. There it is. 5905. For those watching, got on the screen in front of us. Unit 109. And if I'm... Hello. And... (laughs) Thank you. Hello. Hello. Is it me you're looking for? Is it, <laughs> is it working? Okay. Anyway, uh, Lionel. as of right now, my great friend who I like to bust these chops, Mr. Otto. You want to announce him? Otto Von Klutz. <laughs> my buddy. I will make sure I take double doses of medicine that day. Yeah. <laughs> so... And, and uh, well said there, Chief. Great plug. And I love that, that Matt even alluded to. I love how you just completely beat around the bush for the show going down that weekend. But it's important because it's easy to forget about everything you just mentioned with the hype surrounding SummerSlam and Allegiant Stadium. Again, a week from today. Plenty to talk about. And the first so time. Right. So, you, you know, 
we, we have so many, we don't realize, we've got so many wrestlers coming in town. I mean, Booker T and Charmel's going to be yeah. down there. Um, uh, what's his name canceled, though? Kurt Angle. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately. Um, I'm trying to think of who else. The Lucha Brothers canceled mm-hmm. for the Wrestle Lucha, Swap too. Well, they got called back to AEW, if I if I read that right. Yeah. But anyway, folks, there's going to be a lot of great talent in town, and uh, um, yeah, John Cena. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Who who'll be taking on Roman Reigns in the main event of SummerSlam I at Allegiant Stadium? Oh, yeah. <laughs> kind of big. Wait a minute, I know how to get. It's back. a thing. I know how to get back at Matt. Hey, Matt, isn't there a donut thing going on at 9 o'clock uh, Saturday morning next week that you can't attend, buddy? <laughs> I love how Matt's do, giving up this like, blank Do you want to talk about that one that you can't attend? But I've got a suggestion for Should you. Should I tell him about the guest you're not going to be allowed in the studio for next week? But, but, I, have a, <laughs> but I, have a, I have a suggestion for you. Just leave at 9.30. That way you've got enough time to get over there and... Uh, Make it happen for oh, yourself. I got plenty of time. We because, gotta... because I know that you respect and like the two ladies, and I don't want to see you miss it. I want you to get there. To, oh, that to thing. Sure. Nah, I'm not worried about that. You're not? Those are Mandy Rose and Sony Deville are doing like a pop up shop. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I thought you. Hey, Matt's like, it's an afterthought. I'll, I'll get to it if I can. Eh, it's just oh. Mandy Rose. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. But before we take our, our last break here, I do think it's very much worth mentioning that Allegiant Stadium, first time we're going to see SummerSlam in a football venue since, what, Wembley in 92, yeah. which is considered like a top three of SummerSlam of all time. It's up there with the 2002 version of the show. Before we wrap up on this segment here. Yeah, but then AEW's got, got one coming into New York at a tennis venue. so That's cool, too. You better believe it. Yeah, absolutely. And that's- Raiders, Andre Agassi. Yeah. <laughs> that really compare it depends on the culture yeah <laughs> yeah well you know and the funny thing is like forty thousand on 11, on the on surface it doesn't but the fact that aew is singling out these venues in a way to differentiate say, dif- differentiate itself i think is smart it is cool though, yeah it, it, sure. it, it is a great idea but we're talking SummerSlam great moments the 92 card in wembley is definitely one of the all-time greats bulldog and bret hart for the title the intercontinental title I mean, go, no, go ahead, Chief. I want to go here. Yeah. Uh, James Palmer, another of our wrestling guys. Um, I was nervous meeting Flair. I figured he'd be uppity where the fame went to his head, but mm-hmm. I was greatly mistaken, very down to earth. Truly loves his fans and know they got him where he is. And Rick, like Sean Hyde said, Rick is a very humble guy, especially in later yeah. years. He is awesome to talk to. I've heard that, too. I've heard he's very, like, he really wants to hear the opinions and the feedback of fans. Like, when he talks to fans, he's very curious to think, yep. to, to ask you what you think of the product. He, he wants to gauge the, the viewership. Yeah, for sure. I've yeah. met him a couple of times. I've yeah. talked to him for, like, 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. He's always, like, super... It's definitely one of the nicer ones. Yeah, like, I think Flair's ego is really when the cameras are on. I think beh- off, like behind the scenes is actually where you're going to catch more of the chill version of him because you said he can't really let the spotlight go, but that's only when the cameras are rolling and he's out there. Yeah. Outside of that, I think he's very comfortable with where he is in his life, and he should because he's the greatest to freaking ever put on a pair of boots. True. Yeah. I've met a lot of them, and it's usually like the mid-carters with the ego. Oh, oh, I believe it, because they, they probably still have a bone to pick or a chip on their shoulder, because they, they don't think they ever got the fair shake. And in some cases, maybe it's true, especially when looking at WWE, but, you know, yeah. I mean, that's wrestling. It's probably the most unfair, uh, you know, sports entertainment league organization type of thing, if you will, like, like medium. Do I guess we, that's the word. Do, of we a need, do we need to go to break? Yeah, we're going to go to break right now. I just Chief wanted, would have a rant for like a month yeah, if gonna, he ever met MJF. Oh, I'm sure. Because that dude lives his whole game. Ah, yeah. And, oh, and, my God. And does it well. And we will actually hey, get to that and wrap. You did a good job Wednesday night, man. Yeah. And we'll get to that and we'll wrap things up again. More to talk about with SummerSlam. A great promo last night on SmackDown between John Cena and Roman Reigns. We'll hit that as well. Who so, cares? Oh, Jesus. So we stay. Do. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. <laughs> Who cares? Stay posted. Bread for Aaron. Matt Chief. TCA. <laughs> If you order Firehouse subs online or with our app, we'll have those delicious, melty subs boxed, bagged, and ready to pick up with Rapid Rescue to go. Firehouse subs. Enjoy more subs. Save more lives. This is John Cena. I just, I just, I just wanted to send you a congratulations on your podcast. Thoughts count anywhere. Because indeed they do. Thoughts are important. 
I mean, what would they, we do without them? And how can they not count any of this? Is there a place that thoughts don't count? I can't think of one. Well, I just wanted to say thank you very much, congratulations, and good luck on the podcast. Thoughts count anywhere, because they do. All right, getting set to wrap things up here on Thoughts Count Anywhere. We got Chief Shadow Boxing. The man has been bringing it from start to finish, from bell to bell. He's amped. He has something already on his mind. Is take a Bluetooth this morning or something? Yeah, right. Like, <laughs> Chief, Chief, what's the deal here, man? The wrestler of the day, uh huh, Sylvester Ritter. Sylvester Ritter, there, Mister uh, Engineer. Well, as, if you would, please. As he, as he pulls that up, looking at today itself, a couple of very important birthdays in the industry today on August 14th. Bob Backlund, Bobby Eaton, Kofi Kingston, Buddy Landell, Johnny Gargano. Not only big names, but names that are really relevant, whether it be fortunately or un- unfortunately, given True. what's happened as relate with some of these names we just read off. You know, it's kind of timely. So a good day to honor those birthdays on here on August 14th. There's the picture. He just got it. It'll be coming up, and you all are going to be surprised who it is. Do you have any idea who I know who he is. You know who oh he is. Oh, my God. Do that's you, like the oh, second one in 90-something episodes. Do you have any idea? Just because I looked at the picture, JYD. Think of where you put cards. JYD. Sylvester. The junkyard dog. Yes, Sylvester Ritter started out up in Canada wrestling. Mm-hmm. For, with the, with for Stu Hart. The Stampede. Yep. With stampede stampede yeah. wrestling under the name Sylvester Ritter. Then he came down, started in the territories down in the U.S., and became the junkyard dog. That's my education for today, folks. And sa- safe to say he caught some traction with that gimmick in terms of the younger demographic, in terms of just fans in general. He's one of the most uh, probably glorified baby faces of all time, so, as he should be. Sylvester Ritter was an American professional wrestler and college football player, yep. best known for his work in Mid-South Wrestling in the world World Wrestling Federation as the Junkyard Dog, a nickname he received while working in a wrecking yard. He was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame class of 2004. Which was, I believe, the first time they started televising the night before WrestleMania, because the yeah. first class was like 93 with Andre the Giant, yeah. but they never televised it. They started televising, because I remember, I think Greg Valentine got in that year. Um, uh, who Billy Graham got in that year in the 2004 class. It was like a stacked class before WrestleMania 20. Yeah, there was a ton in of In Madison them. Square Garden, right? So that was the one who kind of kick-started the annual tradition of doing it the night before WrestleMania. And before we went to break, Chief got the, even more grievances out there about how he feels, uh, John Cena. And I think a lot of that, Chief, it's understandable because this is going to be a match where if Cena were to win, he'd break the record. And a lot of people are going to take that with a grain of salt. Maybe even put an asterisk on it, if you will. And obviously, that would be a historic moment for a historical event. We have about 10 minutes here before we get out of here. I'll ask you guys this, and we just alluded to it, the 92 Wembley Stadium. This is the first time it'll be held in a stadium of that, I guess you could say that caliber here out, out here in Allegiant. That was a huge show, 92, Bret Hart, British Bulldog. What is your guys' favorite all-time SummerSlam moment, or at least a few of them if you have any in mind? Liberace. The fuck? <laughs> That's, like, really, Chief? You, you've been bringing the... You brought so much shit today, you damn near broke two microphones, and you, you come crawling to the barn with that? Liberal... What? Is Liberace even at some Hey, bro, what are you doing every Saturday at 9 a.m.? Get some, get some Liberace in, what? baby. Was it, was it Liberace WrestleMania? Was he SummerSlam? He was WrestleMania. Yeah, but I had SummerSlam. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Three quarters, half. There you go. Hey, hey. I think it's gone up to seven eighths, yeah, buddy. I, I, I was going to say. 37 five. By, by the time we get ah. out of here at 10, 10 Pacific, Chief may have, you know, hit the full gambit. Hey, let me throw one. Go ahead. J- Jameis Palmer. Um, here's one not talked about. Who he took care of till he died. Lord Littlebrook. Now, there's, there's another one. A midget. Thanks, Jameis. Appreciate it. Uh, getting back to SummerSlam, yeah. my favorite SummerSlam moment. Uh, I don't it's have the event in August. I don't have one. I, I'd the say, Hardy Boys. I'd say for me, it actually is probably mm. just the entire 2002 card. 
Like to me, that was that's one of the probably the three best wrestling pay per views I've ever seen ac across the board. I mean, the opening match was Rey Mysterio and Kurt Angle. They had like nine and a half minutes, and they put up like a match of the year caliber event. You had a, a, a huge passing of the torch type of moment with Lesnar winning the title. You know, beating the Rock. Why does God bring that guy up? Oh, Chief, <laughs> just disappointing Chief left and right. See, this is why we need Aaron. There's back. more people he doesn't like than he likes. Oh, fair enough. Fair. Just don't bring the hubcap up. Fair enough. But there, and there's a couple of great, you know, 2013 was a great event with Danielson and, and Cena and there's Punk, and, Punk and Lesnar. Book. And there you go. You see it on the screen there. Yeah. That's who Chief was I just can't wait to. for the episode when Eva Marie wins the... Freaking hubcap. <laughs> women's title for she, some odd yeah, right. reason. She ain't going to win it. <laughs> that'll, that'll be a cold day in hell. What, what about you, Matt? <laughs> Do you have any moment of SummerSlam? One of my favorite SummerSlam moments was... The one when Randy Orton cashed in Money in the Bank on Daniel Bryan. That was 2013. Because yeah. I was there. Yeah. That was, a, was, that was a great card. Watching that crowd go insane from when he won the title to everybody leaving that arena almost dead silent because everyone was so mad. The only time I've ever seen a crowd go like from that hype to that like depressed is was being at the Conor McGregor uh, Nate Diaz fight when Nate choked him out. Yeah, watching all the Ireland people yeah. and that just leave with their heads down was and it, yeah, no, it, it def was hilarious. Definitely, that was one UFC one ninety six. I remember yeah. that. And the event you're alluding to that was in LA. I remember SummerSlam yeah, twenty thirteen, and Center. that's what started the authority. Yep, which obviously went on far too long. But initially, it was very well done. Triple H had been a babyface for like six, seven years up to that point. Everyone was wondering when he was going to turn heel. He's yeah. the special guest referee in one of the best matches of the year between Cena and Brian. Right when Brian's push first started picking up some steam, and the match was incredible. You had the Punk Lesnar match was great. You had like I think like. One of the only successful double turns, it was the Del Rio Ziggler match. Yeah, they had yeah. a successful heel face double turn where Del Rio became the, the heel and Ziggler became the face because they kept attacking the head with the concussions and all that. That was a very good event. I think 2002 and 92, though, are probably still the ones that really Oh, stick yeah, out. for sure. Yeah. And again, just because uh, the, the, that Bret Hart British Bulldog match, that was considered like a, a heavyweight fight, a box, yeah. like a prize fight. That's how big it was. And just to piss Chief off, it's. 2021 is going to be in that same category. Yeah, I to, think so, too. To be honest. With, I think it's going to be a great show. To be honest with you, though, I uh, I really didn't watch wrestling back then mm -hmm. in those years for the simple fact I was uh, at sea a lot. Yeah. So that you yahoos could watch wrestling. Damn right. So, you know. Thank you, Chief. I, I did what I did so you could Thank do you, what Chief. you and, did. And with the WWE. And, and I love... I love you. Giving we'll keep the me Navy jokes. Yeah, I right. love you giving me. <laughs> and I and I and, and I even I even alluded to my love of sailors in our last show when we got we started no, kicked off. So I, I just you know what, and, and there was a period in time mm -hmm. that I just I didn't have time to watch. And you stayed away from the product. I had to. But with the network you know? and stuff like that, you could retroactively catch up with the archives and see now, the stuff yes. you missed, and you could pick and choose, which is great. And Matt just alluded to, and obviously we're joking about SummerSlam 2021 in Allegiant being a classic event. We hope it is because we're going to be there in attendance. But Hell who knows? Yeah. It you may know. fall flat on its face. But I got to tell you, given the caliber of worker that Roman Reigns is and John Cena and the promo, we, we've talked about it multiple times, how great that, what, 2016 promo was when they were both in the ring yeah. back on Monday Night Raw when Babyface Reigns was just trying to, you know, hold the candle to John Cena and Cena just completely eviscerated him. A little bit different now coming full circle. Reigns is the, pretty much the best thing the company has right now as oh, far as yeah, the heel, sure. the heel champion, the badass, and Cena now trying to make history. That promo with, I mean, the missionary reference, the one, two, three reference, it's all great. Okay, put your uh, oh, here we go. Yeah. put your favorite yeah, SummerSlam Aaron, up, what, my brother. What's your, what's your favorite SummerSlam moment? Take care of me, moment. will you? Okay, there it is, right there. Yep, it's my favorite one. There it is, right there. Ted DiBiase. Look, yeah, well, look at that. Thing was the best thing. Oh, there look, you go. We got an '80s mark. I look love it. Look at that, DiBiase, <laughs> Andre. Coming from the guy who doesn't know who Eddie Guerrero is, oh. Hogan. <laughs> and, oh. and the former governor of I was Minnesota. having fun, Matt. Yep, and J Jesse the Body Ventura, who also is one of the all-time great heels and commentators. Worker, he was, a, he was good as a worker, but what he did with a headset on and what he did with a promo and a microphone yeah. being interviewed, it was so good. I think people forget just how good he was, and obviously that streamlined itself directly into politics. So SummerSlams, I, it's safe to say everyone knows behind WrestleMania, it's the number two show. I didn't behind that Survivor oh, yeah. Series and Rumble. True. So you want SummerSlam to be filled with these type of moments. You know, real quick, how many matches have they announced for SummerSlam? 
the card's just about full now. It yeah. Is. And, and they I mean, just announced Drew versus Jinder uh, Jinder Mahal yep. last night. And then okay. everything is kind of setting in a place with Orton and Riddle. Randy returned wearing sh- basketball shorts for some Orton's, reason, which was. Vi- Did anyone Riddle else notice gonna, that? Orton that was and, weird. Orton yeah. and Riddle. He, he, R- he RKO'd Matt uh, at the end of the night. That probably sets up. I mean, next week is the go home we'll show. It's it got to turn it's, into those two against Amos and. It has to. AJ, AJ for the style. Tag See, tonight. it was past my bedtime, so I was asleep. Fair enough. You know, I go to bed at nine o'clock. Four or five. Fair. <laughs> Fair ah. enough, fair enough, Chief. It, al- it allows you to bring plenty of energy in the rants, which I, again, promise to never walk all over again. Nope. Yeah, but again, Aaron, thank you so much for the opportunity to fill in for you today. Prayers are with you during, uh, during this time. You should be back in action, good to go. For next Saturday, as we preview SummerSlam, when it'll just be hours away, so I'll, Unsportsmanlike Conduct should be a fun show. This will be a fun show. The day of. Allegiant Stadium that night is going to be packed. It's going to be a good be one. Hype. Oh, it's going to be good. You got anything? I'm going to drive Chief hey. nuts oh, that yeah. fucking day. Oh, you should. You got, you got anything? John closing? Cena. You got anything closing now? Dun, 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 dun. Hmm. Speaking of like pop culture stuff, just so we usually close with that. What did you guys think of the Field of Dreams game? That you know, was freaking awesome. That was fantastic. And Chief, we were so caught up in our football we love did. fest that we had on, on the show we just did. We didn't even touch on it, no. but it was phenomenal. This is that was true. Baseball. That was true baseball. Yeah. And here's the thing: what happened during that night and the next morning? People were talking about a regular season baseball game in the middle of August. That yeah. alone is a major. That never happened. No. Never. And you had the perfect thing with the the opening and Coster coming out the cornfields. I have been to that tourist attraction, have and you? it's oh, it's phenomenal. It's so cool. If you ever get a chance, if you're in Dyersville, Iowa, I know that kind of sounds funny. No, that's but okay. if you ever, but you're are, from that part of the well, country. Well, I went. To, I went to school out there. I played. Yeah. I played college football out there. And then um, right before my graduation, me and my dad went out to, and my my mother and my sister went to check it out to kill some time before right. we, we left to come back here to Vegas. Amazing venue. So it was a great idea. We talked coming in, Chief. This is something they should consider doing every year. This should be yeah. an annual thing. The fans loved it. It was a great game between two teams that are really hot right now. Yep. The White Sox have a, the great walk-off with Tim Anderson. Everything about it was just perfect. Like, there was, there, was yes. really, there was no flaw. As a Yankee fan, I guess my only flaw was that they lost. But outside of that, this could not have gone better. Those like, balls were, like, juiced. Oh Everyone my God. was freaking just smashing them. them. Giancarlo was whacking them. They were all whacking them. And the fans loved it. The, the, the television audience loved it. The, visually, it was so appealing. It was just a great, great event. Everybody, be safe. Have a good week. SummerSlam is upon us. Let's have fun. And I love how I heard a little background laugh from Aaron when I said John Carlo was whacking it. But, hey, that's how we like to end things out here. All right, so, hey, again, Canadian. huge. Yeah, right. Aaron, hope everything's going well for you, brother. Ab- we, we love you. We miss you. Absolutely. But we had a great fill-in. Yeah, and, and, I, uh, and I appreciate it. Thank you for filling in for Aaron on Unsportsmanlike Conduct. It was an honor and privilege to be able to do the same here on TCA. Aaron will be back in action next week. Preview in SummerSlam, which, as me and Matt have already referenced, Don't listen to Chief. It's going to be a hell of a show. Who cares? So be there. (laughs) Again, right here, Go Live uh, Vegas Family Networks. We'll be back in action next week with Unsportsmanlike Conduct and Thoughts Count Anywhere. So have yourself a great week. Get excited. Allegiant Stadium next Saturday night. It's going down. For Brett, Chief, Matt, we'll catch you guys then. Thanks for tuning in to Thoughts Count Anywhere. Have a good Saturday. Peace.